American fighter jets now have a new weapon to use against enemy drones that promises to change the combat arithmetic of these engagements squarely in Uncle Sam's favor. And this new footage, released by US Central Command this week, shows it in action against Houthi drones over the Red Sea. Now, these new interceptors can be carried in large numbers by American fighters, can engage drones and cruise missiles with precision from miles away, and can close with aerial targets at speeds approaching Mach 3. But what really makes these new weapons so special is their cost. After the US Navy burned through nearly $780 million worth of interceptors last year against Houthi drones and missiles, maybe as much as 40 times what the Houthis spent on those weapons themselves, now for the first time Uncle Sam is bringing down enemy drones with an interceptor that actually costs less than the drones they engage. And that is a very big deal. So let's talk about the AGR-20 Falco Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System 2 and how it is changing the counter drone game. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. American allies and partner nations are voicing concerns about a kill switch that could render exported F-35s inoperable. And while officials from several nations now have stated clearly that there is no kill switch, that hasn't stopped news outlets from pretending there is to drive clicks and avoid having to explain the complex reality of logistics. And I've been staying on top of this trend thanks to Ground News. Ground News is an aggregator that collects articles published by news outlets all around the world and places them all into a single easy to read feed that helps me not just stay on top of things, but to see right through many common forms of media bias. Right here on Ground News, I can see that 70 outlets have already covered this story, including 11 left-leaning ones and 10 right-leaning ones. And some outlets on both sides are really leaning into this kill switch myth to drive clicks, with left-leaning outlets running headlines like Panic in Berlin, the United States can turn off our F-35 fighters with the kill switch. And some right-leaning outlets leaning into the same hyperbole, with headlines like Fears erupt about F-35 kill switch over claims U.S. could disable RAF jets. Misleading headlines really matter, but they're not the only things we need to look out for these days. And Ground News also shows us vital information about each outlet alongside those headlines, like their political bias, factuality rating, corporate ownership, or government affiliations. And I love the Ground News For You tab that compiles stories that are sure to interest me based on topics that I've selected to stay on top of. Ground News is a big part of my research and my day-to-day -day news consumption, and it can be for you too. Just go to ground.news slash sandbox with two X's or follow that link in the description below to get 40% off the same vantage plan that I use every day. Again, that's ground.news slash sandbox to get 40% off their vantage plan that'll help you stay on top of things. The advent of low-cost one-way or kamikaze drones in recent years has presented unique challenges for the U.S. military, which developed its air defense doctrine and systems around taking down much more expensive fighter jets, bombers, and missiles. Air defense platforms like the Army's MIM-104 Patriot, the Navy's Aegis Combat System, and more were all built around the idea of using multi-million dollar interceptors to take down multi-million dollar targets. Over the past few years, the American military has demonstrated pretty conclusively that these ship and air-launched missiles can locate, close with, and destroy just about any drone an adversary might launch. But using these interceptors against one-way attack drones that might cost as little as just 50 grand a piece represents a very tough economic pill to swallow. With short-range interceptors used by the Navy, like the evolved Sea Sparrow missile, ringing in at roughly one and a half million dollars a piece, and more capable, longer-range missiles like the SM-2 or SM-6, ranging from two and a half to as much as 4.3 million dollars each. 
Of course, these surface-based defenses have been bolstered by fighters mounting very effective intercepts of these airborne targets themselves. And while this does represent a much cheaper approach to drone defense, cheap is probably still not the right word for it. America's primary radar-guided and relatively long-legged air intercept weapon is, of course, the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile better known as the AMRAM, which, depending on iteration and capability, rings in at, well, a bit north of a million dollars apiece. Now, its shorter-ranged infrared-guided sibling, America's lowest-cost air-to-air missile, is the AIM-9 Sidewinder, which, again, can vary in cost, but has a reported replacement rate of right around $472,000, making it currently America's best and lowest cost option for drone engagements of this type. Now, this all raises some pretty big questions about America's ability to financially withstand prolonged air defense efforts like the one it's currently embroiled in out over the Red Sea. And we tend to call this comparison of the cost of an intercept versus the cost of the weapon intercepted the cost exchange ratio. Now, because of the complexity of air intercepts, it's generally expected that interceptors will cost about twice as much as the drone or missile that they bring down, a cost exchange ratio of two to one. But recent figures out of the Navy's Red Sea defense suggest Uncle Sam is currently spending somewhere between four and 40 times more than the Houthis to defend these important shipping lanes from drone and missile attack. And while I'm on record as saying that may well be worth it, I still can't deny that it's expensive. From the onset of the Navy's Red Sea defense through the end of 2024, the Navy expended something in the neighborhood of 400 individual munitions taking on Houthi drones and missiles, ranging in price from around one and a half million all the way up to well north of $12 million each. All told, that shakes out to just shy of $780 million in expended munitions. But the problems extend a lot further than that. Up until recently, the U.S. Navy lacked the ability to reload its warship interceptors while at sea. And today, that capability is still pretty limited. Now, this means Navy destroyers and cruisers need to sail all the way back to friendly ports and take days away from the fight in order to restock their missiles. And that is where the AGR-20 Falco, also known as the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System 2, or APKWS-2, comes in. Rather than using multi-million dollar interceptors like the SM-6, or even pricey air-to-air -air missiles like the AMRAAM, the AGR-20 is effectively a cheap 70mm Hydra rocket married up to a semi-active laser guidance system ripped out of the Hellfire missile. Originally designed for use against lightly armored ground targets back in 2008, this system takes an existing two and three quarter inch fin stabilized unguided rocket and adds a soda can sized mid body guidance unit called the WGU 59B behind the warhead but ahead of the existing Mark 66 Mod 4 rocket motor. Now, in order to make sure these weapons still fit in their standard launch tubes, BAE Systems incorporated the guidance sensors into four small foldable wings, each housing laser seeker optics that are blended together into a single wide field of view once they deploy about a half second after launch. Now, this combination of systems resulted in an inexpensive weapon that bridged the capability and range gap between the 20mm machine guns commonly found on attack helicopters like the Apache and the longer-ranged but pricier Hellfire missiles carried by the same. Now, in this application, these weapons first entered service for the Marine Corps back in 2012, and by 2013, the system recorded its 100th combat launch in Afghanistan without a single reported failure. But things got really interesting in 2021, when BAE Systems added a proximity fuse and a software upgrade to increase the weapon's range and make it capable of taking down airborne threats from ranges as far out as around seven and a half miles, depending on launch altitude. And it can close that distance at speeds as high as Mach 2.9. 
These weapons carry a variety of warheads ranging from 8 to as much as 14 pounds, but the most common 10-pound warhead has a blast radius of around 30 feet and a fragmentation debris radius of up to 150 feet, making it extremely well-suited for engaging airborne threats like drones and missiles. At around 74 inches long, with a 2 and 3 quarter inch diameter and a total weight of just 32 pounds, fighters like the F-16 can carry up to two pods with seven of these guided rockets each on a single weapon station, which would usually carry just one air-to-air -air missile. Now this is a particularly big deal when engaging drones or cruise missiles launched in high volume. As a group of Air Force F-15E Strike Eagles learned defending against Iranian attacks in the Middle East this past April. Out of the 300 weapons launched at Israel on April 13th of 2024, at least 170 of them were relatively low-cost kamikaze drones, and 30 more were subsonic cruise missiles, giving American and British fighters in the region at least 200 targets to engage from the air. After expending all eight air-to-air -air missiles carried by each Strike Eagle, some even resorted to trying to engage low- and slow-flying drones with the fighters on board 20mm cannon, an extremely dangerous thing to do in the inky darkness of the night sky. But there were just too many targets and not enough missiles to go around. All told, those six Strike Eagles alone flew a combined 14 sorties, landing and rearming in record time to go after more drones as they flew by overhead. With maintainers and techs turning these jets around while air defense systems fired all around them and debris rained down from the sky. Altogether, this genuinely heroic effort saw a total of 112 missiles, or interceptors, brought to bear against these airborne targets across those 14 sorties. But if these six fighters had each been equipped with, say, four LAU-131 rocket pods instead, well then each jet could have taken off with a whopping 28 interceptors under wing, allowing that formation to bring an incredible 168 targets down in just one sortie each. And while the cost of replacing all those sidewinders and AMRAMs will range from as little as 52 million if they were all sidewinders to as much as 146 million if they were all AMRAMs, the cost of replacing all 168 rockets would have been just 4.2 million. In other words, you could literally buy an F-35 and two Black Hawk helicopters with what these interceptors would have saved in that single engagement alone. According to the Air Force, the AGR-20 rings in at just $22,000 to $25,000 per round, meaning you could buy roughly 19 of these interceptors for the cost of a single Sidewinder missile, and as many as 52 for the cost of an AMRAM. And maybe most importantly, that means these interceptors cost even less than most of the drones or missiles they'd be used to bring down. Iran's now infamous Shahed-136 kamikaze drone that's seen widespread use in the Middle East and in Ukraine costs a reported $50,000 apiece, though a hacker group who gained access to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps' email servers found internal documents that suggest a per-drone cost of closer to $375,000. Now that means these new AGR-20 interceptors don't just improve America's cost exchange ratio for these kinds of engagements, they completely invert it, making it one to two in America's favor, and maybe as much as one to 15 if these emails are to be believed. Or put more simply, that means Iran has to spend at least twice as much on these drones than America spends on the missiles that bring them down. And these low-cost interceptors aren't just a whole lot easier and cheaper to reload than the Navy's shipborne missiles. The Air Force even says they're faster to reload than their current air-to-air -air missiles, making it easier to conduct what's commonly called an integrated combat turn, or ICT, where you rearm and refuel a fighter while its engines are still burning to get it back into the fight as quickly as possible, as we saw with those Strike Eagles this past April. 
Now, the Air Force conducted its first test intercept of a drone with these weapons back in December of 2019. Launched from an F-16 out of the 85th Test and Evaluation Squadron, queued off of the jet's sniper advanced targeting pod. But as far as the public is aware, these weapons didn't see their first air-to-air -air use in combat until this past year over the Red Sea. And as near as I can tell, this is the first footage we've ever gotten of these low-cost weapons in actual use for the air-to-air -air role. Now, these weapons have already been integrated into a wide variety of American and allied aircraft, including the A-10 Warthog, the AH-64 Apache, the F-A-18 Hornet, the MH-60 Seahawk, and even SOCOM's new World War II-style attack plane, the Sky Raider II, which you may know as the AT-802 Skywarden. And more recently, these weapons have even been integrated into ground launchers like the Navy's new Electronic Advanced Ground Launcher System, also known as EAGLES, which carries a four-rocket launcher with an electro-optical infrared sensor turret and its own dedicated radar array. Now, of course, as broadly capable as this weapon is, there is no such thing as a single solution to the growing drone problem. And this program represents really just one of seemingly countless efforts aimed at bringing down one-way attack drones, including a variety of increasingly powerful directed energy weapons. So, like really any weapon system, you can only see the real value of these low-cost interceptors once they're integrated into a broader array of air defense systems and capabilities, with some, of course, costing more than others. But efforts like the AGR-20 Falco, which are focused on repurposing existing and inexpensive munitions in new and creative ways, are among the most exciting to me, because they aren't pie-in-the-sky predictions about what kinds of defenses we might be able to find in a year or in five years or in a decade. They're already here, already proving their worth and already saving lives, all without breaking the bank. And that's exactly the sort of thing that service members in the fight and taxpayers footing the bill can all get behind. Now, before I go, I want to remind you guys that we are now selling Air Power merch on the Sandbox News store, including hats, hoodies, t-shirts, and even some very cool posters, like the ones you see behind me. So make sure you check them out. I'll include a link in the description. And with that ends this very short-fused edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.